think I'm done. About this time three years ago, I performed the biggest show that I'd ever performed in my entire life. It was in the Smock Alley Theatre. Um, I was still an acoustic artist back then. All my friends and family came out to see it. It was 200 people we managed to pull into this theatre. And it took so much. It took so <laughs> so much of my life to achieve that and it was a complicated year some mad stuff happened at the same time and after the show the stress had gotten to me so badly that I ended up leaving my job a really nice job eh? I would say um, that was the first time that everything got way too much I mean, really, way too much. And it's happened several times since. I don't know if this is one of those moments. I don't know where I'm going with this or what I'm trying to do with all this, but I think I just need to... Uh, I don't know, voice this idea. Because chances are, if you're an artist, if you're somebody who's creative or somebody who's out on their own, starting a business, I don't know, whatever it is, you probably had this feeling as well. Um, yeah. I want to give up. I think back then with all the buzz around the big Smock Alley show and the boy who learned to fly. I was really trying to fill boots that I had no right standing in. I think a lot of us get ahead of ourselves. We look at those we admire and we think, yeah, I'll just do that. And we miss all the steps that they took to get there. And then we do the big thing and we do the grand gesture. And very little comes of it. At least straight away, that is. And being an artist, unfortunately, is about those little everyday steps. It's about every single moment that you improve. It's not about getting the record deal. It's not about getting the exhibition. Because those things come and then they go. And they feel great, but they're... Hmm, they're rungs on a ladder. And nobody ever talks about the spaces in between those rungs on that ladder. And that's where everything hard is. That's where this moment is. That's what I'm doing now. I'm showing you that empty space that you never get to see. A lot of people will reach out and they'll congratulate me on things and they'll say, well done. Some artists will wish that they had done what I did or think that I've got so much going on. And it looks like that, it really does. And I'm guilty of believing it about other people too even the most successful artists in the world, they have these moments where they sit at home in the middle of the night and they want to give up. I've been at this four years, five years I've been doing music. Not where I thought I'd be. I'm technically 15 years into performing and I'm definitely not where I thought I'd be from back then. And it does make you wonder, like, when's the expiry date? When you get to a certain age, is there just no point anymore? And I think it's in the back of all of our minds. 
As every year rolls by, you think, am I the one in the front line who's going to take a bullet next? Am I the one who's going to give up? And that's always scary. <laughs> and this is another thing. I think it was Slash who said, um, you have successful musicians and then you have those who gave up along the way. Which makes sense. I mean, it's dodgy reasoning. I don't agree with him. But it makes sense that if you just keep going and I see it, I see friends of mine, I see competition that surrounds me and gradually they fall away. They stop making, they stop producing, they get other jobs, they change careers, they compromise. And it's in those spaces between the latter, that's when you give up. Nobody comes out of a big event, a big headline show, sweaty and excited, and says, I can't do this, this isn't possible. But two days later, when the social media has died down, people have stopped congratulating them that's when they realize maybe this isn't for me I don't know how to say this next part there are so many chances for you to be disappointed in what you're doing you can have success in one way and it doesn't look like success if you do something else that's a bit vague. You could have 100,000 followers and then you could release a song and it gets 100 streams. You know? And this stuff is way more common than you think. Yeah. So there's always a chance and there's always an opportunity for you to feel like it's not worth it. To feel like you're failing. You see the gaps in between each step of a ladder. They're wider at the base. Not in real life, I mean the metaphor. <laughs> and the wider the gap you have, the more likely it is you'll fall through. Recently, a friend of mine said that this was the hardest part of my career. And he said that because I'm able, I'm capable, I can write music, I can play music, I have a performance down, and it's good, and I'm really good at what I do, but getting people to recognize that, getting my opportunity to show that off, getting the money that I need to actually do anything with what I'm doing, it's next to impossible. So I'm coming up against so much frustration where I feel like my skills and my talent and my life is being wasted sending emails and figuring out strategies for social media. When in reality, what I'm good at doing is talking. I'm good at performing. I'm good at writing and singing and playing. But that's what I almost never do. That's why perpetually not drowning is is so nice. It's an opportunity for me to actually talk and tell stories. It's why Patreon has been the best thing that ever happened to me. Not just because of the financial support, which is amazing, but because it started forcing me to write songs. It made me take time out to produce songs. It made me take time out to do videos like this. That if I didn't have Patreon, if I didn't have people who I'd agreed to provide these things for, I wouldn't do them. I would possibly have given up earlier. Now I think what's really interesting and really the purpose of this video is why I'm not giving up. <sighs> 
I lied. It's the middle of the day. <laughs> and this is why I'm not giving up music. To go back to when I was younger, as a circus performer, let's say. When I was about 16, 17, I was getting ready to leave secondary school. I was getting ready to study for my leaving cert. I was going to go to college and I needed to pick what courses I wanted to do. I had decided I wasn't going to college. Now, not even I knew this yet. And nobody else around me knew it either. I mean, you're in school and you can't really tell your teacher that you're going to run away and join the circus. They kind of just laugh at you. Now, for me, there was one teacher and she knew that I didn't belong in school, that I was not a good studier, that I had better things to do with my days. I didn't want to just sit in a classroom and get an education. I wanted to go out into the world. I wanted to be in front of people. And I wanted to use my body in all kinds of ways to make this magical performance, the kind of performances that I loved to watch. I wanted to be a circus performer. So what I was doing back then was limiting myself on purpose. And this is why I stayed a performer. It's why I stayed in the world of creativity and arts. It's because I felt like I couldn't do anything else because I had convinced myself I couldn't do anything else. And it worked. And it works still. To this day, I still do this. When I feel like I can't survive as an artist, when I feel like there's no hope for my work, I just tell myself, there's nothing else you can do. This is what you signed up for. It's what you've trained for. It's what you know. And I don't want to recommend it because it's not right. It's not super healthy or adjusted or... Yeah, it's just not a good way to live. But it does work. So if you really need help to hold on, convince yourself that you're no good at anything else <laughs> yeah <laughs> what was I saying that would one of the other things I do to stay in the game and I find that when I perform or when I have a performance coming up all of those thoughts disappear these are the little wins that people talk about these little events these little moments that prove that you can do this that show yourself and show the world and show everybody around you that it's possible because when it feels possible that's when you get your momentum to make it possible and when it feels impossible that's when you slow down to a crawl and to a stop and give up so trying to make these little wins happen is really important and I think if you don't have something to look forward to that's where you start start by planning something to look forward to and then yeah I think there's a bunch of other things that people use to stay in the game. A bunch of other things people do to continue their artistry. You playing the piano, Goody? Yeah? You wanna write a song? So yeah. For me, it's mostly about little wins and convincing myself that I'm no good at anything else. I look to be inspired when I can. I go back to Miyazaki films and I watch them and I think wow there is so much magic in these films in these stories if I could do that for the world and then suddenly you're away you want to do it for the world you want to you want to fill the world with this kind of magic that's what I do yeah 
And I'm sure people will tell you that they do other things. Some people want to prove the world wrong. Some people want to articulate this thing inside them they can't understand. But a lot of us do give up. And I hope it's not you. Finally, what I will say is... Finally, what I'll say is... <sighs> the last thing I want to mention before I go is faith. And this is something you see everywhere in the creative world. Some of the greatest artists you'll have ever heard of or you'll ever see or experience or read, they attribute their success to God or to a higher being or to something. We talk about <laughs> the statistics of success. You know, most of us fail. We do. Like if you are in a college like me and you're surrounded by other artists, most of them will fail at what they want to do. They'll succeed in other ways, of course. They'll find other things they want to do, but their current dreams will not come true. So the likelihood, the likelihood is you're going to fail as well. And so am I. So what's the thing that keeps you going in the face of grim statistics? Faith. We pretend that it'll be us, that we're the ones that are going to make it. That if we try hard enough and we believe in ourselves long enough, that it will become true. And that kind of blind faith, honestly, I see that making the difference between creatives and non-creatives. People who take these big risks. One, we are in a position to take these risks. I mean, I am so blessed and privileged with the gifts that have been given to me through things like the social welfare and Patreon. Most people don't have those things to help. But beyond my gifts, I just believe that it's going to work. I am convinced for no good reason. For no good reason. All I've been doing these past few years is trying to come up with reasons to believe in myself. And those reasons, yeah, they're selling tickets. They're putting on shows and absolutely destroying the stage and people loving what you do. It's people reaching out to you and saying that they love your song. That's the proof of your faith. But it's not the source of your faith. You need to believe that it's going to happen when there are no reasons. In those gaps of that ladder, it's faith that carries you across. And finding a way to keep that faith, well, that's your next step. For now, I will wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I will see you on February 12th for my next headline show. Is it too early to talk about Valentine's Day? Feels like it is. Fuck it. We're doing a Valentine's Day show on the 12th. And we're going to do a discount for heartbroken people. <laughs> but we'll get there for now. Yeah. Goodbye. Thanks for watching.